And I maintain that one of the moves for knocking someone out in this game is just like that of a five-year-old pushing someone mean. But then again, I'm not on any special forces team. You occasionally get an ally in this, and that's a really great feature. You have to help each other pass obstacles, like one of them will get on the other person's shoulders to get somewhere higher, and they can walk up walls with their backs to each other. No, seriously. And the co-op in this also utilizes this beautifully with a number of things that you can't do by yourself so the two have to work together. You can save at any time in this but there is only the one save file. Thankfully you can restart from a checkpoint as well. The first mission introduces you to what you can do in the game and early on you get training videos and they're short, sweet and to the point. And you can replay them anytime you want if you've forgotten how to do something. The conclusion here is really awesome. The levels are well designed and there are again several memorable ones including one where you move on top of and inside of a moving subway train and you occasionally automatically duck to avoid the lower hanging objects. You know the whole I'm taller than you thing. At one point you defuse bombs and it is the most entertaining, intense time I've had playing one of these four games. You still don't go in with a detailed plan, you kind of just survive and proceed on account of a number of lucky coincidences. And the map can confuse you at times, and again that's not where the challenge should lie in a stealth game. All four of these games bring something new to the table. And I definitely recommend all four. That was my spoiler for review of the Splinter Cell franchise. I hope you enjoyed it. Now if you'll excuse me, matters of national security require my attention elsewhere.